Hi class, we're back in poetry. We're on page 311, page 311 of your book. And we're gonna learn two terms, actually three terms, but two terms right now about poetry that we need for when we get to study Romeo and Juliet. So we're building up to Romeo and Juliet. So learn these principles now so that when we get to Romeo and Juliet, it makes more sense for you. All right, so the first one that we wanna talk about is a meter. Again, page 311, make sure you have that open as you're watching this, page 311. A meter, what's a meter? A meter is the arrangement of stressed and unstressed syllables that create the rhythm in a poem. For instance, Mary had a little lamb, his fleece was white as snow, and everywhere that Mary went, the lamb was sure to go. Do you hear how that has a rhythm? Mary had a little lamb, his fleece was white as snow, and everywhere that Mary went, the lamb was sure to go. And it has sort of a kind of rhythm. It moves the words along in kind of a tempo. Okay, that's what a meter does. A meter gives us the rhythm, the rhythm. Now, our last lessons, uh, two weeks ago, were on rhyme. Remember how things rhyme, how words rhyme. I rhyme, they look like they should rhyme, but they don't. Slant rhyme, there's a similar sound in them, but in the end, they don't rhyme. And perfect rhyme, words that do rhyme, like everywhere the lamb, Mary went, the lamb was sure to go. Go rhymes with snow. So therefore you have perfect rhyme. So that was on rhyme. Now we're moving over to rhythm. What do you vision in your mind when you say, Mary had a little lamb, his fish was white as snow, and everywhere that Mary went, the lamb was sure to go. You envision, you could envision, if you're willing to try, a little lamb, like jumping around from spot to spot in the hillside in the spring. Oh, Mary had a little lamb, and it's moving. All right, so that is rhythm. And a meter takes the syllables of your words. Now remember what syllables are, remember, kindergarten? My name is Brenda. How many syllables are in Brenda? Right? Two. Brenda. What if my name was Brenda Crusin? How many syllables are in Crusin? Two. Okay? What if we took Carson Stickles? Four syllables in his whole name. What if we just said George Lewis? How many syllables are in George? One. How about Lewis? Lewis, two. Right? How about Ethan? Ethan. What about Gonzales? Gonzales, he's got three syllables in his last name. So those are syllables. Let's just refresh our brains about what's a syllable. How many syllables the word is broken up into. So meter is going to deal with rhythm. How do we decide the rhythm, or how do authors, when they write a poem, want to express a certain feeling with the rhythm in their poem? It's called a poetic foot. And a poetic foot is the special combination of two or three stressed or unstressed syllables that repeat throughout a line of a poem. So there's a special combination of stressed and unstressed. What do we mean by stressed and unstressed? Well, just like there's stressed people that are like out there and they're moving around and it's in your family of stress. And then there's the calm people. You're sleeping. You are unstressed. And so take that to words. <laughs> for instance, look at Sunday. Do I say, I cannot wait for Sunday? Or do I say, I can't wait for Sunday? How many syllables are in the word Sunday? Two. Where is the stress on sun or on day? The stress is on sun. So in poetry, they give you these little uh, marks. They put a little line over the stress. So hopefully you can see it. So sun is going to be stressed. Unstressed, get a little thing that looks like a U. So we just call them a U. All right, unstressed. So nobody goes around saying, Sunday is here. They just say it real fast, Sunday. And you're here, you hear more of the sun than you do the day. So therefore, sun is stressed and day is unstressed. Which one do you hear? Look at over. How many syllables are in the word over? Two. 
over. Okay? If class is over, what's the, what do you hear most? Do you hear more of the V or do you hear the O? I hear the O. So I would say that O is stressed and ver is unstressed. It is over. We are through. We are over. No one says we are through. We are over. Okay? The stress is on the O for over. Now here's a tricky one. How about a three syllable word? Amazement. Amazement. So now, where do we hear the stress in amazement? Okay, we hear the uh, and no one goes around saying, how was, how was that movie? I was in amazement. I think it's more, the stress is more on the second syllable, maze. So we would do unstressed, stressed, unstressed. And if you're really good, you can divide your things up, your words up into the syllables. See this? Amazement. So unstressed is the one you don't hear as much. Stressed is a syllable that you hear. Now, there are six types of arrangements of the syllables. Notice that these two start the same. Stressed with unstressed. This one goes with unstressed, then stressed. And there's a whole bunch of ways that poems and authors use in their poetry to put a whole bunch of combinations of this stress and unstress. Right now, on page 311, there's six. They talk about six of them. Today, I just want to deal with the one. Okay? The one. And that's the I am, or the iambic book. Okay? Iambic. Look on page 311. Iambic consists of one stressed, one unstressed, and one stressed. So, here's my line of poetry. Sonnet 18 by William Shakespeare. I didn't have time. I just wrote his name in abbreviation, Billy Shakes. You understand. All right. Shall I compare thee to a summer's day? Now, Iambic is going to take one unstressed and one stressed. So the unstressed has to come first. Now, in the lines of poetry, we're not dealing with words. We're dealing with syllables. Okay? We are not dealing with what? Words. Mm -mm. No, sir. We're dealing with the syllables that are in the line of poetry. So, Iambic. Shell. Is that one syllable, is it not? Okay. So I would put the unstressed for shell. What's the second one? I. I is stressed. Shell I. Okay, and then I'm going to draw my line here because now I'm doing iambic, which is two syllables. Every two syllables, I'm going to draw this line. Every two syllables. But for it to be iambic, it's got to be unstressed and stressed. Okay, let me just double check. I'm um, consistent of unstressed and stressed. Now look at the second word, compare. All right, so there's my syllables. Now, the word compare is one word all by itself, but we don't care about words. We're doing syllables. Now, where would you put the stress on this? Would you say compare or would you say compare? All right, the stress is on pair. So the com is unstressed. So see, unstressed, stressed, unstressed, stressed. Now, what are the next two syllables? V2. V2. We're dealing with two syllables because we're doing iambic. First one has to be stressed. Second one has to be, excuse me, unstressed. The second one has to be stressed. So, V2. When I say V2, V2, I hear the T-O. V is kind of unstressed. So this would be unstressed and this would be stressed. All right, now what's the next two syllables? Here's where it gets funky because we're not dealing with words. We're dealing with syllables. 
Shall I compare? Shall I compare thee to a song? A song. Mer's day. Alright, so now I've got, I broke it up into my two syllables because we're dealing with iambic. I ams, one unstressed, one stressed. Okay? All is definitely unstressed. Some is definitely stressed. Mer's day. Mer's day. Unstressed, stressed. So, William Shakespeare's his first line of Sonnet 18 says, Shall I compare thee to a summer's day? Do you hear the rhythm? Shall I compare thee to a summer's day? It's iambic. Now, each one of these things right here, okay, see these blocks of two? This is what we refer to as the poetic foot. Okay, this is one poetic foot. This is two. This is three. This is four. And this is five. So, how many poetic feet are in this line? There are five poetic feet, <laughs> foot, in this line because we're doing iambic. And it's unstressed and stressed, unstressed and stressed, unstressed and stressed, unstressed and stressed, unstressed and stressed. So therefore, this poem is what we call I am Mick. It's usually not the capital. Pentameter. Because penta means five. And there's five meters. There's five arrangements. What kind of arrangement? Iambic. What's iambic? Unstressed, stress. Unstressed, stress. All right? So this is iambic pentameter because there are five feet, which equals what? Ten syllables. Shall I compare the two a summer's day? All right, so five feet, each foot has a two syllables, and that's what's called iambic. Now make sure you rewind this and watch it again, because you probably aren't going to get it the first time. All right, a meter determines the rhyme. It's the arrangement. How are we putting all these syllables together? Unstressed, stress, unstressed, dread. There are six different poetic feet. The one we're talking about now is iambic, which has an unstressed syllable with a stressed syllable. So what you're going to do is you're going to look at a poem and at first break it up into the syllables. Where are the syllables in this poem, this line of poetry? Then go back and decide which is stressed and which is unstressed. Now. All the six different types of poetic feet have different ways, combos, different combos of stressed and unstressed. Like maybe one will be unstressed, unstressed, stressed, and another one will be stressed, unstressed, and it'll be all crazy. All right, we're not going to deal with all that. Don't get excited about that. You can learn three things. What's a meter? What's a poetic foot? And what is iambic meter? Iamic is unstressed and stressed. Unstressed and stressed. And it goes on. Okay? And these little groups of syllables are called the poetic feet. All right, so that's our lesson for today. Make sure you read this as well. There's tons of information in page 311 that I am not going to go through right now. But read it so you understand what's happening and rewind this video so that you can make sure you understand this. Okay. What is meter? What is a poetic foot? And more specifically, what is an iambic meter? And if you put five of them together, you've got iambic pentameter. William Shakespeare writes Romeo and Juliet in iambic pentameter. Now he changes it up occasionally, but that whole first prologue is going to be 
iambic pentameter. So if we get this down and we get the rhythm, it'll help us better to understand what he's saying. Shall I compare thee to a summer's day? Right? All right, so there's our meter, poetic foot, iambic pentameter. Rewind, watch again. Bye, everybody. I miss you guys.